A number of questions have asked about your nuclear program. Why is your government seeking to acquire enriched uranium suitable for nuclear weapons? Will you stop doing so? Our nuclear program, first and foremost, operates within the framework of law. And second, under the inspections of the IAEA, and thirdly, they are completely peaceful. The technology we have is for enrichment below the level 5% level, and any level below 5% is solely for providing fuel to power plants. Repeated reports by the IAEA, IAEA explicitly say that there is no indication that Iran has deviated from the peaceful path of its nuclear program. We are all aware, all well aware that Iran's nuclear issue is a political issue. It's not a legal issue. The International Atomic Energy Organization Agency has verified that our activities are for peaceful purposes, but there are two or three powers that think that they have the right to monopolize all science and knowledge, and they expect the Iranian people, the Iranian nation, to turn to others to get fuel, to get science, to get knowledge that's indigenous to itself to humble itself, and then they would, of course, refrain from giving it to us, too. So we're quite clear what we need. If you have created the fifth generation of atomic bombs and are testing them already, what position are you in to question the peaceful purposes of other people who want nuclear power? We be do not believe in nuclear weapons, period. It goes against the whole grain of humanity. So, let me just joke up, uh, give, sort of tell a joke here. I think the politicians who are after atomic bombs or are testing them, making them politically, they are backward, retarded. Mr. President, a, a final question. I know your time is short and that you need to move on. Is Iran prepared to open broad discussions with the government of the United States? What would Iran hope to achieve in such discussions? How do you see in the future a resolution of the points of conflict between the government of the United States and the government of Iran? From the start, we announced that we are ready to negotiate with all countries. Since 28 years ago when our revolution succeeded and we established, we took freedom and democracy that was held at bay by a pro-Western dictatorship, we announced our readiness that besides two countries, we are ready to have friendly relations and talks with all countries of the world. One of those two was the apartheid regime of South Africa, which has been eliminated. And the second is the Zionist regime. For everybody else around the world, we announced that we want to have friendly brotherly ties. The Iranian nation is a cultured nation. It is a civilized nature. It seeks, it wants and talks and negotiations. It's for it. We believe that in negotiations and talks, everything can be resolved very easily. We don't need threats. We don't need to point bombs or guns. We don't need to get into conflict if we talk. We have a clear logic about that. We question the way the world is being run and managed today. We believe that it will not lead to viable peace and security for the world, the way it's run today. We have solutions based on humane values and for relations among states. With the U.S. government, too, we will negotiate. We don't have any issues about that under fair, just circumstances with mutual respect on both sides. You saw that in order to help the security of Iraq, we had three rounds of talks. 
with the United States. And last year, before coming to New York, I announced that I am ready at, in the United Nations to engage in a debate with Mr. Bush, the President of the United States, about uh, critical international issues. So that shows that we want to talk. Having a debate before the world public, before the, all the audience. So the truth is revealed, so that misunderstandings and misperceptions are removed, so that we can find a clear path for brotherly and friendly relations. I think that if the U.S. administration, if the U.S. government puts aside some of its old behaviors, it can actually be a good friend for the Iranian people, for the Iranian nation. For 28 years, they've consistently threatened us, insulted us, prevented our scientific development every day under one pretext or another. You all know Saddam, the dictator, was supported by the government of the United States and some European countries in attacking Iran. And in, he carried out an eight-year war, a criminal war. Over 200,000 Iranians were lost, lost their lives. Over 600,000 Iranians were uh, hurt um, as a result of a war. He used chemical weapons. Thousands of Iranians were victims of chemical weapons that he used against us. Today, Mr. Nobal Veh, who is a reporter, an official reporter, international reporter, who's, who's covering UN reports in UN for many years. He is one of the victims of the chemical um, weapons used by Iraq against us. And since then, we've been under different propaganda sort of embargoes, economic sanctions, political sanctions. Why? Because we got rid of it. You've been listening to the president of Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who to applause took to the floor at the University of Columbia in New York to a blistering uh, attack disguised as a welcome, one might uh, suggest, from the president of the school who said the hardline leader behaved like a petty and cruel dictator. He was uh, uh, made a number of, uh, uh, gave a number of answers to a number of questions posed by students and the uh, f faculty there. Uh, one was, do you or, or your government seek the destruction of the state of Israel as a Jewish state? He said, we love all nations. Uh, the Jew Jewish community is represented in parliament, he said, and I quote, to solve 60 years of problems, we must allow Palestinians to decide on their future uh, themselves. He was asked a number of other questions, including why are you calling for additional research into the facts of the Holocaust? He suggests that there are different perspectives that come to light and that research should continue. He was also asked uh, why uh, there were no genuine freedoms for Iranian women and, uh, and for homosexuals in Iran. He was asked why Iranian women are, are denied human rights, as are homosexuals who are hung. He said uh, freedoms in Iran are genuine freedoms. Uh, women in Iran enjoy uh, some of the best freedoms in what he called our free nation. He said we don't have homosexuals in our country so therefore they don't need freedoms we do not have homosexuals in our country the words of uh, the president of iran uh, they're speaking at columbia university a day ahead of uh, uh, the decision that he will uh, speak or is expected to speak at the un's general assembly uh, he'll take to the podium as george bush will take to the podium uh, stepping up warnings about other Middle Eastern threats uh, against Iran's uh, chances for strengthening an international coalition are appear at least uh, uncertain as they were prior, of course, to the Iraq war, which was uh, about this time five years ago when President Bush came to the United Nations to warn of the grave and gathering danger posed by Saddam Hussein. So the UN's General Assembly uh, forthcoming here this week uh, in New York.